Hello everyone and welcome to Glencoe. <laughs> we are at the ski resort. Be a bit rude not to go up the ski lift. See what we can get. There's snow up there and I missed the snow this year. So it's time for me to go and get my share. And we've arrived. <laughs> We're at the top. Whoa, oh, way up. Looks like my face has gone a bit dark. Let's get you in the light. There you go, you can see my natural beauty. Look at those views. So, according to the lady down below and the guy just over there, I should get a view across Glenetiv. So, That way somewhere. Let's go. So I haven't come too far away from the actual uh, ski lift drop off. And there's already a beautiful section of waterfalls, which I think are the top of the waterfalls that we spotted on the way up in the chairlift. We've got one, two, three cascades. And of course we got some snow all around it as well. Can't resist doing this before I head off to the main area. Hopefully the views are phenomenal there. Fingers crossed. Wow. Such a shame there's not more snow. Some nice big patches, but I could do with it just being a little bit more. So I've taken a portrait version of this. I'm just about to take a landscape version as well. I've got a nice big patch of snow on the left. There's a patch of snow in the top right. Unfortunately, I could do a little bit in the bottom right corner as well, but the rocks are very jagged and hopefully I can pull a bit of detail out of them to help balance it. Well, that's the waterfall done. Time to move on. So the only downside with this is sunset is at eight o'clock. The last chairlift is at 4.30. So as I'm making my way up the mountain here, I'd like to give a shout out to Paul Baker. Now Paul Baker, he's a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he's also a member of the F7.1 group, I think, which is a group of other photographers and YouTubers that do a podcast. Now he was kind enough when he came across my videos to notice that I use a Z7 that I've just got and he's just upgraded his Z7 to a Z8 and he's kindly sent me his R bracket that he no longer needs which is fantastic there was no need to um, I'm only a small channel compared to him so I'd like to thank Paul what a very very kind fellow very kind fellow and uh, I hope to meet up with him and uh, say a proper thank you I owe him at least a coffee, so thank you, Paul. Links are in the description. I'll put them on the screen as well. Go and check out his channel. Ah, I'd appreciate it if you did, because that was just such a kind thing to do. Thank you, Paul.
Right, full disclosure on the ticket for doing this, because you'll need to know what you're getting yourself into if you're going to come and do this. So it's £17 to come up on the lift. That allows you to go up and down the lift once. I checked this with the lady in the office uh, who sold me the ticket and she said, no, that's a pass for going up once and coming down once. You could only ride the very first lift. So once you get up the first lift, you can't go on any of the others unless you're skiing or snowboarding. So you need to be aware of that. It does mean you're gonna have a bit of a height to get anywhere once you get up here. But the views, wow. <laughs> Look at this for a 360. Yeah, huffing and puffing. Oh, the views, yeah, they're phenomenal. Right, let's get up the top. <laughs> Look at this. How beautiful. Wow. <laughs> on top of the mountain, on top of the world. Ma. <sighs> right. I need to uh, find a shot. The last lift down is at 4.30. It's at least half past two, probably quarter to three. Highest point on the mountain, man. All right. Well, there are two other parts of rocks over there, but they're definitely lower than this one. I'm going with this one. Okay, so first composition is set up and we're looking at a portrait version of this. I'm using some rocks in the foreground here that have got some leading lines to point out to the mountain range there. Doing the standard large foreground, mountain background, moody clouds in the sky. The sky's looking lovely, it's got these bands of thick clouds. Yeah, F11, focus stacking it because I'm out at, ooh. I'm out at somewhere around about 30 mil, I think. trouble I've got that patch of snow is there and it's just the one it's just a big white bright patch I'm gonna have to find a way to eliminate it I need to go and find some snowy foreground there's not much on the top here I do quite like the snow in a great big puddle that was back there because you can see through the water and then you've got ice and then snow. Uh, but I was trying to get that to match up with the mountains. It's a bit set back, so you get too much full rain. We'll have a go. Do that one next. Well, it's coming on for 20 past three now. So I reckon I've got time for one more. Then I'm gonna to have to make my way down, otherwise, I run the risk that I've got to walk all the way down the mountain. I don't need that. Uh, certainly not going to be an epic sunset tonight, and I think this is the best light to catch this in today. Nice moody clouds. You've still got some nice ambient light and direct light coming through onto the sides of the mountains. Yeah. Don't think it's going to get much better than this today, so <sighs> that'll do me. Well, this is what I've got to work with. I love this foreground, 
but it cuts the mountains off halfway up. So I can't really utilize it from here. It's got some nice sort of water with the reeds sticking through it. And then you've got the slush that goes to ice that goes to snow. And then you've got the, uh, the grass on the, the bits that pop up, but it's no good from here. Wow, that snow goes in quite a bit. Better from here. Ideally, I think I need to be on the three <laughs> islands that are right in the middle, but I know that that's a foot deep there and it's also going to be boggy underneath with peat. So it's going to be up to my knees. I'll have to try this one and angle down and get as high as I can. This tripod isn't the tallest. We'll try that. And then we'll have to see if we can get over to that side, try it from there, or we're not going to get onto those without getting soaked and I'm not doing that. Right, so the last of the angles, got to admit, I don't think it's going to work very well unless I can get the camera over to the left a bit, into a load of water. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a lean job, isn't it? I can't quite see what I'm doing. I can generally. Amazingly, I'm perfectly level where I am. That's good. Oh wow. I'm exactly where I wanna be. So we've got an S bend of the water going out to Bakai Latif. We've got the icy snow either side. Uh, of course, we've got the epic mountain backdrop. Right, we'll stick with that. I can't believe I've just plonked it in the water and it's exactly where I want it to be. That's amazing. All right. How do you like them apples? Oh, 10 to 4, 40 minutes. I need to get into this other coat because I'm actually sweltering. Ah, sorry for the noise. And we need to make a move down the mountain. Right. Let's go. Okay, we've got to get down there in 20 minutes. Should be okay as long as I don't fall. <laughs> no guarantees. I think we'll do a little bit of speeded up footage going down the lift, see how fast we can make it. See if it looks like a zip wire. Well, there we go. About 15 minutes to get down from the top of the mountain. Not too bad at all. You can pretty much treble it going up. That's generally the rule of thumb that I go by when I'm climbing a mountain. All right, let's get on this, uh, see if we can make it a zip wire. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Alrighty. Cheers, buddy. So here we are back at the van. And that's been a cracking little trip up to the top of the mountain there. Hopefully I've got some decent images. Time for me to get inside and warm up. And that's where I'm going to leave you guys. I'll catch you all in the next one.